Hello, and welcome back to Nolan Financial Radio. My name is Chris McKinney from Nolan Financial Partners. If you'd like more information about what you hear during our show today, give us a call at 719-210-4242 or visit us online at nolanfinancialpartners.com. And while at our website, click on the radio page, check out our past shows, and subscribe to our program on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So please don't hesitate to give us a call with any questions you have about this program or programs in the past. Uh, and we can set up a face-to-face -face or, or a virtual meeting. One of the common points of concern for our clients is creating consistent and durable income streams for the retirements. Sounds like a perfectly reasonable concern, right? After all, most folks are going to need income beyond Social Security in order to maintain current or preferred lifestyle during their retirement years. During our conversation about sustained retirement, we look at things like 401ks and IRAs, while also discussing how, for certain people, annuities may be a way to provide retirement income or to balance their retirement income against their 401ks and IRAs for when we're having down periods, like right now. During our show today, we're going to take a close look at annuities, what they are, some of their pros, some of their cons, and how they may fit in your financial strategy. But before we enter the wonderful world of annuities, let me introduce my co-host, Tony Shore, who, unlike annuities, comes only with a list of pros. <laughs> oh, <I don't> know. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Chris, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a con in there somewhere. <clears throat> Let's get my wife in here and see what she has to say about that. Oh, don't bring Tara back either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, <laughs> speaking of that, people are probably looking at the show going, wait a minute, something looks different. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Tara is uh, traveling. She's jet setting around uh, Europe for her uh, government work, I suppose, right? Yeah, but this weekend she's uh, traveling on a four-day holiday, uh, and she's in Paris. She texted me a picture of the Champs de Soleil. Or oh, say that. So she's on a break from the government work over there. So she got to spend some time in Paris. Is that it? Yeah, that, that that's it. So you know they they do actually get some time off when you're in the military. You don't have to work every day. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, that's good. Uh, it's too bad you couldn't be. You have to be here with me <laughs> doing the <this> show, <laughs> and she's in Paris. Uh, oh boy, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, are we yeah. gonna miss her today? I miss her already, Chris. But I, you're great. I I have been missing her for about three weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know the she's first been all. The Over first the few days was okay, but uh, after that, I was like, hmm, she's been yeah. gone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> she was in Germany too, right? Yeah, yeah. She's over in Germany working, and then uh, so she's she's putting in uh, some good time there at the United States Air Force uh, European Command. Uh, oh, wow. So that's wow. where she's, she's working there. Yeah, well, I know they keep uh, pulling her in and moving her up, and uh, in addition to her... Uh, being an author and a financial advisor uh she also has been had a career in the military that's been uh long and storied and you you guys met you were in the military too when you met right uh so we yeah we met in tokyo uh at yakota air base uh we she was a lieutenant and i was a young captain at the time and uh we kind of hit it off and and yeah that's awesome. where we met so we that's great i was i think playing, that's a great story I was playing rugby uh, with a local team and I just started inviting her out to the games and then huh. she, so that was, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That was, we had a good time with it. You were quite the stud out there playing rugby. <laughs> she liked that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's right. That's show one on. way to win her over. Invite her to your rugby match. Show her how yeah. tough you are. Right. Yeah. Guys have to show off. That's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not showing off, then you're, then you're not going to get the girl. <laughs> that's, that's right. But we're not going to let Tara know just how much we missed her. Right. Chris, because that'll just go to her head. Won't it? Oh, oh yeah, it would. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're teasing. Well, um, uh, so we're talking about uh, what some people, you know, it's a dirty word to some people, the A word, annuities today. And this can be, it can be a, a controversial topic because people often have opinions on annuities. But I think 
there are a lot of misconceptions out there, Chris, and uh, I'm glad we're going to talk about them today. And, um, you know, just the other day, my neighbor actually asked me uh, what I knew about annuities. And I said, well, uh, <laughs> just enough to be dangerous. But I told him, hey, I'm going to be doing a show uh, with Chris and Tara and um, uh, about annuities. And I'm going to send him the link to the show when we're done so he can get some nice. answers to his, his question. So nice. uh, I'm definitely <laughs> due for a little refresher myself, Chris. So where do you want to start? Um, well, I wanted to start with this uh, U.S. News and World Report article. Uh, it was pretty well written. Uh, there's some things, you know, every every advisor has their own uh, unique take on uh, sure. financial products. Uh, but the title of the article is 16 Things You Need to Know About Annuities. Um, it has some excellent information in it, and it's a good starting point for us to have a discussion about it. Sure. Um, 16 things are a lot, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to get through all of them today. <laughs> no, we're not going uh, to get through all of them. <laughs> but but we're, we're going to hit on the highlights of them um, and, and discuss why an annuity might be a good fit for you. It might not. It's, it's unique to every person. Sure. So they are often misunderstood, right? There, there's, right. there's not, there's so many different types in the marketplace. Annuities yeah. are contracts. And so they can be written. However, uh, as long as they stay within the rules that the IRS sets for annuities, uh, they sure. can be, they can sell them as annuities. Right. Um, and so it, it, it's a very interesting point that these are contracts, right? So it's, right. they're very, very different depending on what you get. So that's yeah. why you have to s get help through a financial professional before yeah. you pick one. I would never buy one off the internet. <laughs> no, so. well, no. Yeah. Or, or from somebody that just sells annuities or just sells insurance because uh, right. they're, they're trying to sell you a product. They're not looking out for your best financial interest necessarily. And they're not looking at the big picture. That's why you want to work with, right an independent financial services professional because you're going to be you and Tara are going to look at the person's situation and say, what is the best tool for you to succeed with your finances and in retirement and provide that income. So you're going to look at all the options, their investments, 401ks, IRAs, uh, if they have real estate and life insurance, annuities, all of these things can be helpful, uh, but not not all are appropriate for everybody, right? Is what you're uh, saying? That, that's exactly right, Tony. Um, you really have to uh, be careful with uh, financial products. If you go to somebody that's that's what they sell, then that's what they're going to give you, okay? Um, and also, if they're uh, what they call a captured agent, um, then they're just going to sell you the ones they have. Maybe right. it's not the right fit for you. Um, so if you go to an independent uh, financial professional like ourselves, then then we have a fiduciary responsibility to get you to the best products for you. Yeah, that's the big difference. You said something there that reminded me uh, of a great quote my dad always told me. Yeah. Um, he, he always said, um, uh, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Maybe you've heard that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great phrase. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So if all they're selling is insurance products, uh, every problem you have, they're going to try to solve with the hammer or okay. in this case, an annuity. So, that's so right. basically, you want somebody who has more than a hammer in that toolbox, that financial uh, toolbox. So uh, yep. I just always love that when he told me, son, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And it, I mean, he would tell me that when I was a little kid and we were out in the garage working. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when I was young, I didn't. But I eventually figured it out. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. If I've got a so, hammer in my know, hand, I'm going to hit stuff with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So exactly. So, I mean, and you don't have to persuade me, Chris, on the importance of obviously working with a financial services professional. Now, right. uh, a lot of people out there might not even know what an annuity really is. So why don't you start there and, and just give us an overview? 
So an annuity is simply a contract between you and an insurance company with the goal of covering things like principal protection, lifetime income, uh, legacy, and potential future costs of long-term care. So let's raise an important note here. Even though the marketing can sometimes make it seem like they are, annuities are not investments. Instead, they're contracts that transfer risk, okay? With an annuity, you transfer the risk to the insurance company. So they are bound by those contractual obligations. Um, and so you can't break them. They can't break them. If you break them, then there's some financial consequences, usually for you, because guess what? They write the contract, right? All you do is sign it. Um, sure. So, so you want to make sure that you're okay with the contractual obligations. It's a contract. Yeah. Well, and that's that's important to understand. Now, uh, annuities, these aren't something new, right? Annuities have been around a long time, at least They've in some around. form or another. Oh, yeah. They, it dates back to ancient Rome when people uh, would make a single wow. payment in exchange for a recurring lifetime payments. So mm -hmm. even the ancient Romans were concerned about securing retirement. Uh, it, it's it's really interesting how far back insurance and annuities go here in the United States. Annuities have been again, uh, gaining popularity, uh, during the great depression when the stock market crashed out. So people were increasingly worried about it and the volatility of it, uh, and what it was doing to the retirements. And so with pensions, uh, increasingly becoming less common now, a lot of folks who are around retirement age are looking to annuities potentially help supplement their social security income. So yet while the high level concept of annuity is simple, the contracts themselves are anything but. The rules yeah. by which annuities are governed are often complex. So yeah. uh, it's really important to, to, to seek a professional. So then here's the million dollar question. Is purchasing an annuity a good idea? I think that's what a lot of people <laughs> want to know. Uh, there's no simple answer for that, Tony. It uh, depends. It, I know what Tara would depends. say. It depends, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's down to each individual, what their needs and goals are, how they need to use their money, uh, what kind of timelines they have their, for, their, for their money, uh, those type of things. You know, if they can can wait uh, because annuities have liquidity problems. So you got to make sure that you can wait for the, for the money uh, to come out of uh, the, what they call the surrender period. Um, so there's one of the good, good things about that. The annuities is that there's some tax sheltering opportunities. Mm -hmm. So they, when you hit your ceiling, your 401k or your IRA, you can put money into annuity and the growth uh, is the growth. The taxes on the growth are deferred, so sure. there's no it contribution. Grows tax free. Grows tax free. Has yeah. no contribution limits. Oh, no contribution limits and grows tax free. Yeah. So that's those are two of the big pluses uh, right. on it. Yeah, yeah, on on a lot of them. Now, um, let's just really quick uh, break down how an annuity works. If you could go over that for us. Sure. So you put, uh, so you you sign a contract with an annuity company, and you give them uh, a lump sum. Let's, sure. for example, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And so then uh, the, you, they would say, okay, we guarantee you that you won't lose money, and that we'll give you money based on some kind of uh, crediting strategy. There's lots of different crediting strategies out there. Sure. There's um, there's variable annuities that use the stock market. There's indexed annuities that use indexes. And then there's uh, fixed annuities that just give a fixed uh, percentage each year. So sure. you can select from those three different kinds of crediting strategies is what we like yep. to call them because you get the credit that way. And then uh, you you also say, I'm going to leave that money in there for 10 years. And so I, I put it, the money, I, I place the money inside the contract and then I, I let it grow. Now, some of the contracts have uh, what they call a free withdrawal amount uh, during the 10-year the contract period. And so that could be anywhere from 5 to 10%. 
And so if you have a hundred thousand in there in that first year, you could take out, if it's 10%, you could take out $10,000. Um, now you have to know how that affects the crediting strategies before you do that. So yeah. because it's a contract, everything's going to be written in there and you're going to know it's, it's not a yeah. secret. Yeah. Yeah. And it shouldn't be a secret and all that should be clearly explained to you uh, by whoever is <clears throat> talking to you about the annuity. And that's why I know that uh, you and Tara are very transparent about every type of uh, decision you help your clients make. And I know that um, a lot of times people get these to provide income for life in retirement. So they know they have a set amount and payments can be monthly, quarterly, annually, or in a lump from that annuity. Um, and you guys, uh, you don't uh, believe in having the uh, annuitized payments or annuitizing the annuity, right? Is that well? Part of our philosophy is that you are in control of your money, right? The money right. is your money. If yeah. you tell uh, the co the insurance company, I want you to just start giving me a, uh, you know, I agree to the annuity stream concept. Um, and so I want to annuitize it or turn on my income stream, my guaranteed income stream, then you essentially give the money to them. Um, and then they are contr in control of the money at that point, And you get the income stream, the income stream for life, which sounds good. But then what happens in retirement if something happens and you need extra money, you, you can't access that capital anymore. Um, oh, it, okay. That's, you, there's the sticker right there. there. That's there, the stickler. Yeah. There's the rub. We believe yeah. that you can turn on your own draw from the annuity and then still have access to your capital in case you need it for, ah. for an unexpected expense in retirement. Cause it has a really that. good uh, argument as to why you shouldn't annuitize then. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a big con with, with the annuity stream is that you give up control of your money. Sure. So, so yeah. 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 But an annuity still might be a good idea. You just take you you just take you the withdrawal out on your own rather than annuitize it. Yeah. Having annuitized payments. I get what you're saying. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and then if you do need, if you have a dental, situation that's going to cost you thirty thousand dollars you have access to money to to pay for that sure um so that's I mean, yeah that's the whole key deal. that's key obviously yeah so okay so we should take a minute right now uh chris to let our listeners know i'm sure they'll have other questions or want to sit down with you and get a financial plan in place whether it's uh, regarding their 401ks, IRAs, retirement income, uh, emergency funds, healthcare costs. You guys deal with all of this. How can our listeners get a hold of you? I know you're offering our listeners today a complimentary, no cost, no obligation consultation, initial consultation, right? That That's right, Tony. So if uh, for the first 20 callers uh, this weekend, we're offering a free consultation uh, just that first meeting so that we can uh, show you how we can help you. Uh, that phone number is 719-210-4242. Uh, we can discuss annuities or anything else that you need to discuss. That phone number is 719-210-4242. Also go out to our website and check us out. That's nolanfinancialpartners.com. All right. Nolan Financial Partners. Dot com And there's a, a wealth of information, pun intended, yes. on the website, Chris. I know that's bad. I had to do it, though. I had to do it, Chris. Um, but there's a lot of great information on there um, for our listeners. And if they go to the show page, this show page, they can listen to this show, uh, past shows, pick different topics that they might uh, have questions about, or they can subscribe to the show. It's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and now Audible. So all the major podcasting sites, uh, they just go to uh, Nolan Financial, type in Nolan Financial Radio, and it comes up. On Audible. That is awesome. That way you could download it and listen to it later through Audible. Yep. I, I really like the yep. Audible 
uh, yep. interface. Yep, because and that's just because we already had it on Amazon Music, but Amazon Music puts all their podcasts, makes them available through the audio uh, Audible app as well. So uh, that's handy. Yeah, I love Audible. By the way, I'm just admitting that I listen to a lot of audiobooks. <laughs> do you, Chris? Yeah, yeah, we subscribe to Audible, and we. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. yeah. I figured you guys did. Uh, I know yeah. you're well read, and in this case, well listened. Well listened. So my, I listen, my I listen dream to a lot to, of financial books. <laughs> yeah, my dream is to do some auto uh, audio books. I've done a couple, oh. but they've just been kind of boring. Like they've been nonfiction. Uh, you know, to do the voiceover for audiobooks. But let's keep rolling with the show. Uh, it's been a good one. We've been looking at annuities, what they are, how they work, and how they can fit in. Um, now, uh, what do you have for us next? Well, so um, we were looking at that uh, U.S. News and World Report article, 16 Things You Need to Know About Annuities. Um, so we're going to describe the key differences between annuities and life insurance. Uh, so they're both provided by insurance companies, uh, they, but they have completely different purposes. As many of you already know, life insurance is crafted to provide benefits to your family and loved ones when you die. Conversely, our annuities are billed to provide a benefit to you while you're still alive. Um, now, not all life insurance does a lot. A lot of life insurance has life benefits, so so don't push them off. Uh, yeah, come and talk to us about them because there are life and benefits in life insurance as well. Sure. Uh, but the thing that the annuities do is they try to do that guaranteed income stream, which which yeah. we don't really use, but. Uh, it make there's more money. The money loan goal is to create income for you in retirement. Yeah, versus, that's the goal, isn't it? Right. Versus a death benefit tied to uh, an insurance policy. Sure. And, and uh, at the beginning of the show, you mentioned there are several different types of annuities. Can you tell us about uh, some of the different types? So, yeah, there's there's two main types and then there's a bunch of subtypes. Uh, there's deferred annuities, which, uh, we mentioned before, and then immediate annuities, uh, deferred annuities offer an income stream later while immediate annuities supply income right away. And so this is one of the big reasons we don't, we had never put people in, uh, annuity streams is because if you decide to, you can always create an immediate annuity when you want to do that. Right. Sure. So, um, with deferred uh, and the immediate categories both ha can be fixed and variable annuities. Mm -hmm. um, so immediate annuities, when the annuity is a new, the annuity is annuitized uh, immediately, and then this income stream is turned on right then. Deferred annuities, the annuity provides income at a future date that you choose. Sure. Um, fixed annuities is there's th that's when you have that guaranteed minimum income rate. Variable annuities, um, we didn't really describe that. Variable annuities are tied to the market. And so basically there's mutual funds or maybe there's a, a broker involved in managing the funds inside that variable annuity. But sure. just, just think variable annuities, stop market. Um, anytime you hear, hear the word variable, that usually mean in the financial world, that usually means it's tied to the stock market. Um, and, and there's risk. You, and there's, can vary, your your return will vary, and you can lose money. That that's exactly right, Tony. So variable annuities is it's not something that uh, we usually recommend. Why why don't you just go ahead and put your money in the stock market? And, yeah, at and, that point, and then you, and you'll pay probably less fees. So, and we're going right. to talk about that in a minute. But uh, the fees, I want to ask you about that. But yeah, variable yeah. annuities. I think that's probably the reason why annuities got a bad. A lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth about annuities, is because, um, like people like Susie Orman on TV railed against them, but she was talking about variable annuities with high fees and risk, and so. Um, those annuities, uh, like you, you were telling me earlier that, Hey, there is a, that they, they can be used by certain people, but it, you, you really have to have a lot of money and use them again as maybe a tax shelter or something like that. It, yeah. The only reason you'd want to use it is if you really need the tax shelter. Um, yeah. and otherwise you'll do uh, better just 
investing in the market sure. uh, yourself because of the extra fees laid into most variable annuities. Yeah. Um, so we don't, we don't recommend those. Sure. So the big one I always hear a lot about, uh, and this is probably next on your list and that's fixed index annuities. They are very popular right now with all the baby boomers who have retired, right? Yeah. You're spot on Tony. Uh, these have become real popular uh, because they provide a minimum guaranteed rate of return with total terms determined by some kind of underlying index like the S&P 500 or some type of, uh, you know, there's a JP Morgan index. There's uh, all the big sure. banks have indexes. Uh, yep. so if you want a little bit smoother, uh, you know, chance for a return. Uh, but the thing we like about the fixed index annuities is that they, uh, they the, the risk is still transferred to the uh, insurance company, unlike variable annuities where you still take on risk, fixed index annuities, the uh, value never goes down. Most fixed index annuities uh, have a, 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 set, or a set date er, annually. So if you had a good year and the index went up, and so you you got those returns and then that set your new uh your new baseline for how much money is in your in in your annuity and then uh then that next year <clears throat> whatever that index does that's what it grows to but if that index has a negative year you don't have a negative year the worst year you can have is zero so yeah. I, I i like to talk to my clients about 2008 and say okay in 2008, if you had an annuity that year, um, how much would you have beaten the stock market by? Well, you got zero because the stock market, stock market was down, but it was down 38%. So you beat yeah. the stock market by 38%. Who else can say that? Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so basically, and that's with a fixed index annuity. That's what we're talking about now, fixed right. index annuities. And as I understand it, with a fixed index annuity, your principal then is protected. And the gains are locked in each year to that That's principal, right. so your principal can grow. So, uh, and then your your principal is never subject to loss. Then, as far as the principal goes, so that is great. And uh, yeah, right, I've heard it that zero is your hero with a fixed index annuity <laughs> in a in, in a in a uh, bear market because, like right, right now, markets are down. The Dow is down twenty percent, but you wouldn't be down anything from your principal. So exactly. Yeah. 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 So our, that's and, and so it makes for a more predictable retirement income. Yeah. When you can say I don't have to if I have enough money that I don't have to have any at risk, why wouldn't I use a fixed index annuity that has upside when the market is good? Um and so there's some uh because you, you need some growth on your money in retirement, right? Because there's inflation which is really big right now. There's uh, technological changes. There are a lot of things that erode uh, our money. And so we need to have our money somewhere in growth, just not sitting in a bank account earning 0.01%. Right. Exactly. Well, you know what? We're almost out of time, Chris. It just flew by. Uh, it's been a great show. Um, uh, really quick before we go, annuities, like fixed index annuities and variable annuities, the only question I didn't ask you is fees. There's a big difference there too, right? Well, yeah. So variable annuities, because they're investing in the market, um, there's, there's a management fee. And so mm -hmm. with those management fees, uh, they can erode your gains. And the problem is you pay those management fees, whether or not the, the market makes you money or not. So yeah. in a down year like this year, you're hitting, you're, you're down because the market's down. And then you're also got those layered fees on top of that eroding uh, your capital. And so uh, we like to use annuities to, to maintain capital. And I think that's what they're really good at. Um, yeah. I think they're a good tool for that. Uh, and so if that's something that needs to be part of your portfolio, then then we like to bring that in. Sure, sure. And fixed index annuities have little to no fees, right? So there's certain types of annuities that have little to no fees. You you can add fees to fixed index annuities, uh, but we we uh, I've never sold one with uh, a fee on it ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
That's you don't good. Do it. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Chris, we have to go. But before we do, let our listeners know about how to get a hold of you one more time. Uh, you can reach us uh, through our website at nolanfinancialpartners.com. Also, give us a call at 719-210-4242. If you want to take advantage of that complimentary consultation, please give us a call over the weekend at 719-210-4242. Uh, if, if we don't answer, just leave a message. It's probably because we're on another call with somebody else. So uh, sure. just, just leave us a message and we'll give you a call back as soon as we can. All right. Well, Chris, great show today. A lot of information and listeners that does it for today's episode of Nolan Financial Radio with our host, Chris McKinney. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week.